слава, слава ЗСУ За кроворожу я кросу Е ла пропаганда Сула пелле ди уна Because I've, I'm sure, I'm sure that life is great present. Слава ЗСУ, за кроворожу я кросу, що на сонці висихає, заплач материнський Господь Бог карає. It's 7.20 here and it's afternoon time in Ukraine where Joseph Lindsley is. This is music from Lviv. Are you still in Lviv? Bob, yes. Uh, after many months of travel, I'm, I'm still in Lviv for about a week. Uh, this is the band uh, Pyrig and Batik. It means something like dumpling and whip. And uh, it's called the Tango of Death. Uh, it's in the traditional Lviv sort of klezmer jazz style. And you know, in Lviv, especially before the war, uh, people sing in the coffee houses. They dance in the streets. And this song really captures well that Lviv sound, sort of a little bit heavy, uh, defiant, languid, and still fierce uh, with, the, with all the traditions of uh, Lviv through the, through the past several hundred years. And the name is uh, particularly, I think the name, the, and my friends are in this band, they chose this name on purpose, Tango of Death, uh, because during the Holocaust, when the Nazis occupied Lviv, uh, they, Lviv was the largest Jewish city in Europe at the time. And, uh, so, and, and most of the Jews here were, 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 were slaughtered by the Nazis. And the, uh, there were many, Lviv has always been a musical city, and many of those musicians were Jewish. And so the Nazis forced them to play uh, music while uh, the fellow their fellow Jews were walking into the into the gas chambers and they still they played it It became known as the tango of death and they played it with all their hearts and soul because they wanted to give you know the, uh, You know their loved ones, you know some nice moment before they themselves were also killed and there's many uh, people who think uh, that Leonard Cohen uh, his song dance me to the end of love uh, uh, dance me through the panic until I'm gathered safely in that that song was written about this tango of death that happened uh, in Lviv uh, in the case of this song, this is obviously about uh, Ukrainians' current fight against the, the Russian invaders. And uh, in the song, uh, the, the, the guy, my friend Mayan, he sings, Armed forces of Ukraine, they defend our country like a child's dream. And then he lists some of the great weapons that have arrived from, from the United States and from Britain, uh, the javelins, uh, the in-laws. He says, it's like gifts from three kings. Muscovy is burned, smoke billows from afar, hands and feet are flying. And then he says, as my grandmother used to say, only the grave will fix. And then he uses a word for uh, the, uh, sort of a nasty word for Russian invaders. And uh, tonight they're going to play this song here in Lviv. And I'm sure that there will be some, you know, you know, people can't stop from singing and dancing here. But it will be nothing like when this song is played in the time of victory. And uh, you know, yesterday I was speaking with a, a woman who's in mourning for a, a, yet, yet another soldier killed uh, fighting near Bakhmut. And she said to me. Uh, you know, at the beginning of this a year ago, she she was imagining a beautiful day of victory where everyone was going to be happy and, and truly dancing in the streets. And she said now she thinks victory will not be as she thought. She said we are losing the best. We're losing everyone. Uh, you know, I, I thought that she thought that so many of these people who have died would survive. She said who will be left? Mm -hmm. uh, and so there is a heaviness and sadness, especially as we look at the intense fighting uh, as, again, especially at Bakhmut. And there was also a video I saw of a soldier a uh, Ukrainian soldier fighting near Bakhmut, a young guy probably in his mid-20s uh, named Roman, and he's speaking in English. I put this at ukrainianfreedomnews.com. You can find it in the top left. And he says, uh, you can tell he's exhausted. He says, I haven't slept in days. And as he's speaking, you can hear the artillery shells coming at, you know, all around him, uh, left and right and everywhere. And he says, he smiles a little, and he says, today, uh, well, he says he's lost several comrades. He's also killed some of the invaders. And then he smiles a little, and he says, I was so lucky enough to find in my pocket this tasty berry and chocolate bar. And he said, uh, today I have so much emotions about my whole future life. And then right then there's a huge burst of artillery. And he continues, he says, so I am going to appreciate and eat this delicious energy bar. I realize, guys, that life is amazing. That's true. That's totally true. And if I will survive here, 
my life will be even more valuable than before because I'm sure that life is a great present. Wow. And then you keep hearing the artillery fire and that's the end of the video. Very sobering. I've said this before. I'll say it again. We're concerned here with the traffic and the expressway construction. And then we hear what you report every day here. And it really puts it all in perspective. The reconstruction yeah. of Ukraine could top $400 billion. That's billion with a B. $400 billion. Who's going to pay for that? Well, you know, there's when we look at reconstruction, I think you have different levels of it there's you know i mean for example considering you know what, what how might china want to be involved in that in a way that they could profit uh using their 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 belt and road initiative where they put countries in debt uh while they promise to build infrastructure so there's that level and uh and some of these big numbers might be you know massive corporations that want to come in and take advantage of ukraine's resources but then there's the day-to-day -day reconstruction uh that's already happening if you go to the suburbs of kiev that were so devastated uh, these are places with beautiful forest, and they've begun to re they've repaved the roads. They're beginning to uh, rebuild the houses. Uh, it's the same, you know, when I was speaking to you from from the Kharkiv suburb of Saltivka, you know, I was in uh, like a ten story building. Sometimes you turn into an apartment, and it's th there's a hole in the floor from a rocket. But then the apartment across the hall, you can hear hammers and nails as someone is rebuilding uh, in these very strong uh, Soviet era buildings. Uh, and so the the rebuilding is happening. Uh, you know, Ukrainians are very resourceful. Uh, and so I think sometimes, you know, there's going to be always with money, there's going to be a lot of gamesmanship of people trying to benefit at a high level. But at a, at a, at a low, at a very basic level, uh, people are rebuilding right now uh, with whatever resources they have. And then I think you look at probably some of the most interesting uh, partnerships, uh, which I, I've I talked to you about before, but like the city of Mikolaev. Uh, which is uh, on the border with Kherson. They, they never let the Russians invade, but they've been shelled very heavily. Uh, they formed a direct partnership uh, with the Kingdom of Denmark uh, to have direct investments. Uh, so there's, there's not so many middlemen and to avoid all corruption. Uh, and so hopefully there'll be more sort of progressive solutions like that uh, and, and, and not, not too many people coming to take advantage of the situation. And now that the meeting is over between Putin and the Chinese president, uh, can we say that basically Putin got a photo op and, uh, and, the, and the Chinese uh, can continue getting cheap oil and gas? Is that what all of that amounted to pretty much? Yeah, I mean, it was sort of chilling, Bob, because you know, they, they both said, oh, we, we've made a promise, you know, that will last for the next hundred years. You know, what did they agree to? Uh, I'm sure part of the discussion is this very idea of rebuilding uh, uh, cities like Mariupol that the Russians have totally destroyed uh, and China could stand to gain from that. Uh, so it is chilling. But I think it's very clear, you know, <laughs> that the, China is not on the side of free people. Uh, I mean, just today in Hong Kong. Uh, people were arrested for having a book, a, a cartoon book that the government thinks is critical of their regime. Uh, so they're in the same uh, mentality against freedom as Moscow. And very powerfully, uh, the prime minister of Italy, you know, again, she's uh, Georgia Maloney. She when she was running for prime minister, she, she spoke against the corporate control of, of people and we're human beings. And this resonated with many Americans, especially those who are skeptical of supporting Ukraine. But Georgia Maloney last night uh, in the, or yesterday in the Italian parliament, she spoke so fiercely uh, uh, in, in the great Italian way. She said, let's call a spade a spade. If we stop helping Ukraine, then we support the invasion. She said, do you really think anyone likes war? Uh, she said, you know, obviously not. But any um, and I, w I wish I could speak Italian because she had such energy when she said it. But she said anything besides victory for Ukraine is, 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 is propaganda and we have to fight against it. Thank you, as always, Joseph. And uh, by the way, we got a text from one of our listeners who really in, enjoys your music and suggested you start your own music channel. And <laughs> we, we, we had a nice laugh over that here. <laughs> I think well, Bob, right. and I know you, you hosted uh, great music programs over the years, I believe. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh yeah, played a few records in my day. <laughs> yeah. we, hope you, we hope you have a, a peaceful weekend and uh, get in some uh, entertainment at those cafes there, and we'll talk Monday. Thank you, Bob. Until Monday. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Well, which side are you on? Come on now. Oh, which side are you on? Значит, и сторонний.